Greetings. Welcome to Episode 1 of Indiana's Timeless Tales. The series currently comprises five books, with a sixth in the final stages of production, that tell the story of Indiana from prehistory until the end of the American Revolution. This episode begins with the end of the Ice Age, in which glaciers up to a mile thick ground Indiana into its present form. The podcast necessarily omits some information from the printed volume, so those interested in all of the material can find it in the book, Indiana's Timeless Tales, Prehistory to 1781. Visitors to Washington County in South Central Indiana will find this marker placed by the Indiana Historical Bureau. Title of marker, Illinois Glacier Boundary. Location, northeast corner of South State Road 135 and Lick Skillet Road, eight miles north of Salem in Washington County. Marker text. Nearby is the boundary of the Illinois Glacier, which covered all but approximately 6,250 miles in South Central Indiana. Most of Indiana's topography was affected by four separate glacial events during the Pleistocene Age, circa one million years ago. Pleistocene Era The Pleistocene Era began roughly two million years ago and ended about 10,000 years ago. During this vast period, at least three episodes of extensive glaciation covered most of what is now Indiana. These glacial events are called the Pre-Illinoian, the Illinoian, and the Wisconsinian Ages. The Ice Ages. The Pre-Illinoian began about 1,200,000 years ago and ended about 550,000 years ago. An interglacial period followed that lasted several thousand years. The Illinois glacial period began approximately 350,000 years ago and lasted to about 50,000 years ago. Another interglacial period followed this glacial event, followed by the last glacial event, the Wisconsin, which began about 150,000 years ago and ended approximately 10 to 12,000 years ago. A period of global warming has produced the climate we know today. These glaciers created two vastly different landscapes in Indiana. The northern two-thirds comprised what geologists call the Tipton Till. Glaciers covered this area during all four glacial events. The glaciers probably never touched the southern third of the state. A hilly, Heavily forested land still bears the marks of vast water runoff that occurred when the Ice Age finally ended about 10 to 12,000 years ago. If the glaciers had never formed, all of Indiana would probably look like the southern third of the state. The Huron Uri Lobe is the glacier that covered Indiana during the last glacial event. Scientists estimate that the average temperature of the Earth was about 6 to 12 degrees Celsius colder than it is now. Sometime about 2 million years ago, Earth's climate cooled. Over vast regions of what is now Canada and North America, the temperature dropped below freezing and remained there through the year. Snow fell and did not melt. More layers of snow covered this unmelted snow, building up layer after layer of snow. This weight of the accumulated snow turned the snow to ice. The ice formed layers up to two miles thick in the Great Lakes region. Over central Indiana, the glaciers were probably a mile thick. This gradually diminished as the ice reached its margins. The pressure deep in the ice field caused the ice to become almost fluid in its movements. The ice flowed over the landscape, carving out rivers and lakes. It also created hills and the dunes area around Lake Michigan. The weight of the ice sheet created the Great Lakes Basin and then filled that basin with meltwater when the temperatures warmed and the ice melted. Geologists estimate that the ice moved about a foot a day, first advancing, then retreating, always grinding the terrain and changing it. Most of southern portion of Indiana had glaciers at different times. However, there is a segment in south central region that has never, as far as scientists can tell, ever had glaciers. During the last episode, the boundary was a ragged line from approximately Terre Haute in the west to Brookville in the east. Below that, the older karst topography of caves, sinkholes, and knobs and disappearing streams that are not found in northern areas. The glacier's presence created two basic landscapes that we find today in Indiana. The northern two-thirds of the states that the glaciers covered consists of a flat landscape that the geologists refer to as the Tipton Till Plain, covering the bedrock. As the glaciers advanced and retreated over the eons, they carried dirt, rocks, and other debris with them. When the last glaciers melted, they dropped this dirt and rock mixture right where they were. Geologists refer to the four basic types of Geologists refer to the four basic types of deposits left by the glaciers as till, outwash, lacustrine, and silt. Sand, silt, and clay combined with gravel and boulders are the main components of racial till. 
Till was deposited directly by the glacier and has remained largely in the same location. As the glaciers melted, the meltwater formed layers of outwash. Heavier components, like gravel and rock, were deposited first. The silt, sand, and clay particles were carried greater distances by the flowing meltwater. The glaciers had carved out depressions in the landscape, which formed many of the lakes found in northern Indiana. The silts deposited at the bottom of these lakes are called lacustrine. Winds carried the finer materials called silt and deposited them further away. These silt layers, called loess, were blown mostly from the Wabash and White River valleys. Near the valley, near the river valleys, this low sometimes forms thick layers. Glaciers have never covered the southern one-third of the state as far as geologists can tell. This region has some of the Indiana's most ancient soils and terrain. Most of the state's bedrock layer consists of limestone, dolostone, sandstone, and shale. Much of the southern Indiana is underlaid with limestone. Much of southern area consists of karst landscape. In this type of landscape, acidic groundwater flows through the limestone bedrock, dissolving it. This action, over time, creates sinkholes in the surface, underground caverns, and disappearing streams. One predominant feature of south-central Indiana is the knobstone escarpment. Geologists call the knobs the knobstone escarpment. They include some of Indiana's most rugged terrain. It stretches from Brown County State Park in the north to the Ohio River. Elevations range from 360 feet near the mouth of the Wabash River to Weed Patch Hill, which has an elevation of 1,056 feet above sea level. This hill is in Brown County State Park and is the third highest in elevation in, elevation in Indiana. Indiana's limestone deposits formed during the Ordovician period about 1.5 million years ago when the land that is now Indiana lay near the tropics covered with a warm, shallow sea. The sea was rich with marine organisms such as brachiopods, bryozoans, Welcome to episode one of corals. Indiana's Timeless These organisms Tale. Died the series in currently the comprises five sea. books through with the six in the final stages of production that tell the story of Indiana from prehistory until the end up. of the American Geologic Revolution. Forces this episode the begins with the sea. end of the Ice the Age, in which glaciers up to a mile thick around Indiana into its present form. The podcast necessarily omits some information from the printed volume, so those entries made up all of the material confined in the book, Indiana's Timeless Tales, composed of concentric rings of calcium carbonate. Sand or shell fragments rolled around on the floor of this warm, shallow sea collecting a layer of limestone. The rock's consistent structure allowed it to easily be sculpted and carved. The stone is almost perfect building material. Indiana's quarries produce rock known by many names. Indiana limestone, Indiana oolitic limestone, Bedford oolitic limestone, and Bedford rock. The limestone belt that produces this high-quality stone encompasses most of Monroe and Lawrence counties. Limestone with lesser quality underlies much of the rest of central and east Indiana. Hoosiers began quarrying limestone during the middle of the 18th century. Indiana has been at the forefront of limestone production. Limestone from Indiana has been the preferred building material for many buildings from New York to Washington, D.C. and other places. The Empire State Building has been as Indiana limestone as a major component of its structure. Find out more about Indiana history by purchasing the book, Indiana's Timeless Tales, Prehistory to 1781. The book includes the early history of Indiana from the time the glaciers melted until the final days of the Revolutionary War. The book includes sketches of the native tribes that inhabited the state, as well as the French outpost established during colonial times. You can find it on my website, www.mossyfeetbooks.com, on the Indiana State Park, on the uh, Indiana Timeless Tales link. Uh, just scroll down to the categories and find that link, and you can have it. Uh, there are links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, and other online booksellers. You may choose to purchase the book in ebook or softbound versions. An audiobook version is also available on Google Play. There will be several more podcasts in this series covering different aspects of the Indiana time of the Indiana history. At the conclusion of the series, I will compile the episodes into an audiobook. The audiobook will be available on Audible, Amazon, Apple, Barnes & Noble, and other audiobook sellers. You can also order the book direct from me, the author, on the webpage. If you wish me to sign the book, just send an email to mossyfeetbooks at gmail.com requesting a signed book and instructions on how you want me to address it. Note, if you send me an email, I will add you to my contact list. 
Readers on the list will receive an email from me announcing when I publish a new book. If you do not want me to add you to the list, tell me and I will not add you. Listeners to this podcast that want email notification on my new releases can just send me an email requesting addition to the list. You can choose to have your name removed at any time. If you browse the website, you will find dozens of sample chapters, one for each of my books. I hope you enjoyed this.